Today I'm not just going to explain how the TCS cycle works, I'm also going to teach it in a way so that you can memorize it. To help us memorize this whole process, we will have to start by asking some simple questions. The first question we are going to ask is that how many molecules are involved in the Krebs cycle? There are nine major molecules involved in this reaction. So the answer is nine. Next question, how many steps are involved in this reaction? There are eight steps. Next, how many enzymes are involved? Since there are eight steps, there must be eight enzymes. Then how many NADH and how many FADH? Three NADH and one FADH. And how many ATP or GTP? Just one. And with that sorted out, let's start the reaction. Now we know that there are in total nine steps. So we are going to number each of these steps. Let's start with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now we do know that the reaction starts with acetyl-CoA and in step 4 this acetyl-CoA is converted into alpha-ketoglutarate and number 9 is oxaloacetate. Now there is a reason why I have skipped some of the names because out of these 9 chemicals you actually need to remember these 3. Rest you will automatically remember as I will show you later. So just remember these three names. Starts with the acetyl-CoA, number four, alpha-ketoglutarate, and number nine, oxaloacetate. So what about the rest? Well, in between the acetyl-CoA and alpha-ketoglutarate, there are two citrates. The normal citrate and the isocitrate. Now I like to remember it like this. After alpha-ketoglutarate, there are two success stories, the succinyl-CoA and the succinate. So let's review once again. Number one, acetyl-CoA. Number four, alpha-ketoglutarate. In between the acetyl-CoA and alpha-ketoglutarate, there are two citrates. Number two, citrate. Number three, isocitrate. And after alpha-ketoglutarate, there are two success stories, the succinyl-CoA and the succinate. And then something really bad happened. FM radio ate the success of the alpha ketoglutarate. F for fumarate. M for mallet. And eight fumar eight. Mal eight. So over here there is fumarate. And over here, at number 8, there is the mallet. And we have already seen number 9 before, which is the oxaloacetate. And that gives us the name of all our 9 members. So let's begin from number 1. Number 1, the acetyl-CoA. Number 4, alpha-ketoglutarate. In between these two, there are two citrates, citrate and isocitrate. And then after alpha-ketoglutarate, that is the two success stories, succinyl-CoA and succinate. But then FM radio ate the success of alpha-ketoglutarate, F for fumarate, M for mallet. So fumarate, mallet and number nine is oxaloacetate. So that now we have memorized the name of the nine members, let us try to understand the chemical reaction itself. Now it all begins with a humble acetyl-CoA. This acetyl-CoA is a two carbon molecule. So here is our acetyl-CoA, a two carbon compound. And in the first step of the reaction, these two carbon compounds will be converted into a six carbon 
side thread. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six. How does it happen? We are going to explain it a bit later. Then the side thread gets chemically altered and becomes isocitrate. However, the number of carbon remains the same. So again, a six carbon isocitrate. Then the six carbon isocitrate becomes a five carbon alpha ketoglutarate. So what happens to the other carbon? This other carbon escapes this molecule in the form of a carbon dioxide. So in this reaction, the isocitrate gets converted into alpha ketoglutarate. It loses a molecule of CO2, which escapes the system. Now this 5-carbon alpha ketoglutarate again loses another carbon dioxide and gets converted into the 4-carbon succinyl-CoA. Now in both this reaction, the isocitrate and alpha ketoglutarate in addition to releasing carbon dioxide, they also lose a hydrogen atom. And these hydrogen atoms are picked up by NAD molecule. And this produces NADH. So over here, we are going to get an NADH. Here as well, we are going to get another NADH. So then what? Now the 4-carbon succinyl-CoA will be converted into another 4-carbon compound, which is the succinate. This is a success story, so nothing is going to get lost. And since it's a success story, it will also go on to produce a molecule of ATP. Now in some books, you are going to find it written as GTP. In terms of energy value, GTP and ATP, they are more or less the same. So we get an ATP and succinyl coa is a 4 carbon compound, succinate is also a 4 carbon compound. Now it's time for failure. The succinate is going to fail into fumarate and since it's a failure the succinate is going to do something and that is a hydrogen and also since it's a failure story Instead of producing NADH, this time it will produce FADH. Now this FADH is sometimes written as FADH with a small 2. Then the fumarate turns into malate without much change. And the malate loses hydrogen to turn into oxaloacetate. And since it is losing the hydrogen, it is again going to produce NADH. Also notice, following the formation of succinyl CoA, no one lost any carbon dioxide. So all these compounds are carbon-4 compounds up to the oxaloacetate. And that is the end of the reaction. Or is it? Remember one thing, when we started this reaction, we started with a 2-carbon acetyl CoA, which magically turned into the 6-carbon citrate. So how did that happen? It happened because, you see, after entering the acetyl-CoA joined with the oxaloacetate. So two carbon from the acetyl-CoA and four carbon from the oxaloacetate. And two plus four, that gives us six, the six carbon citrate. So basically what was happening is that oxalo acetate produced by the previous reaction combined with this acetyl-CoA to form the citrate and as you can see this forms a loop or a cycle and that is why we don't say Krebs reaction rather we call it Krebs cycle or the TCA cycle so this is a self-sustaining reaction which keeps on repeating and repeating with that off it's time for the wars which is remembering the name of the enzymes. But fear not, because we know the ninja technique of remembering the name of the enzymes. So let's apply our ninja technique for naming enzymes. So the first reaction is citrate is being synthesized. 
So the name of the enzyme is citrate synthase. Now the next step. The citrate gets converted into isocitrate and the enzyme catalyzing this reaction is called aconitase. Now this is kind of hard to explain since the name aconitase doesn't actually reflect what is going on. The thing that is happening is that the citrate first gets converted into another compound called cis aconitate. Cis aconitate is an unstable compound that it immediately transforms into isocitrate. So the name aconitase comes from that intermediate compound called cis aconitate. Next, the alpha ketoglutarate gets converted into succinyl CoA, and in the process, it is losing a hydrogen atom. Next, the isocitrate is losing hydrogen to form alpha ketoglutarate. So since hydrogen is being lost, the name of this enzyme is isocitrate dehydrogenase. Next, it's time for the alpha ketoglutarate to lose the hydrogen, and the enzyme will again be another dehydrogenase. And this time it is alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex. Then the succinyl CoA forms the succinate, and in the process, a molecule of ATP or GTP is produced. As you can understand that there is the movement of phosphate and like I have explained in my earlier videos whenever there is movement of phosphate that enzyme involves the name kinase. So this enzyme will be succinate thiokinase. And now the succinate loses a hydrogen to become fumarate. Since there is loss of hydrogen so again this is a dehydrogenase and since it is happening to the succinate, so we can call it succinate dehydrogenase. Next, the fumarate is converted into malate, and this enzyme is called fumarase. So the name is similar to fumarate. And the reason there is an S, A-C-E, it represents this enzyme belongs to the family of lyase, which are responsible for breaking down bond. What happens is that fumarate has a double bond, which is broken down, by this fumarase enzyme to convert the fumarate into malate. Otherwise, the compound remains relatively same. And for the next reaction, the malate loses hydrogen and becomes oxaloacetate. And the name, you can already guess, malate is losing it, so there will be the name malate. And since it is losing hydrogen, so it's uh, dehydrogenous. So, so here we have malate dehydrogenase and then again we are back with the oxaloacetate which joins with the acetyl CoA to form or synthesize citrate so we are back with the citrate synthase enzyme and that's it about the Krebs cycle or TCA cycle my target was just to explain the TCA cycle however do keep it in mind that a lot of other questions surrounding this topic is going to come in your exam. Questions like which of the steps are reversible, what are the inhibitors, where does the inhibitors work, etc, etc, etc. So do have a look at these questions. If you have any further queries, if you want me to cover any other topic, please let me know in the comments. And if you do have some additional questions from this topic, let me know that as well. Thank you.